Hi there, and welcome back to Crypto Anna. We'll discuss one of the industry's oldest projects in this lecture. Despite some significant setbacks, it remains one of the top projects in terms of market capitalization. It's time to examine XRP, a cryptocurrency, and the company Ripple. In the cryptocurrency space, the story is to create a new financial system that will empower individuals and free them from the drawbacks of governments, private banks, central banks, and the existing financial system as a whole. But XRP has another function. It wishes to assist the banks rather than compete with them. To arm them with technologies that will enable them to operate more efficiently than before. Due to the costly and time-consuming nature of traditional banking procedures, several of the industry's top companies are searching for ways to enhance their current systems. Research into blockchain technology and its potential applications follows naturally from this. However, because of their high degree of decentralization and lack of controllability, initiatives like Ethereum and Bitcoin are not a solution. Here's when Ripple enters the picture. We're going to examine how it uses a blockchain method to enhance banking. The issue facing banks. We must comprehend the issue that Ripple is attempting to resolve in order to see why it matters to established financial institutions. The money does not flow straight from the sender's bank to the recipient's bank when users conduct cross-border transactions. Instead, before the money reaches its destination, it passes through a number of intermediate banks. Through a shared system known as SWIFT, the banks exchange information and coordinate orders. Nevertheless, it moves too slowly because the banks have various time zones, distinct systems, and procedures, and they also take longer to exchange currencies. Furthermore, the process becomes more costly due to processing costs charged by intermediate banks. In conclusion, this is a costly and sluggish procedure that need modification. Let's use an example to clarify things even further. Assume for the moment that someone in Brazil, South America, wishes to send money to someone in the African country of the Congo. It is necessary to convert the Brazilian real into a Congolese franc. While all banks have dollar reserves, none maintain Congolese franc reserves. After the bank exchanges the reals for dollars and delivers the dollars to the bank in the Congo, the beneficiary receives the dollars that the second bank sold and converted into Congolese francs. The Solution of Ripples Ripple wants to replace the banking industry's swift messaging network and the millmen that handle money transfers with its own blockchain-based transaction settlement system. This operates in the following manner. After converting the money into XRP and transferring it to the receiving bank, the sending bank turns the XRP back into the original currency. When compared to conventional procedures, this results in fewer fees and delays. With a transaction processing speed of up to 1,500 transactions per second and a settlement time of 3 to 5 seconds, Ripple has the potential to replace SWIFT. Compared to how long international banking transactions typically take, 3 days to a week, this represents a significant improvement in transaction efficiency. When you buy XRP with the intention of investing, you are making the wager that many banks worldwide will employ this technology, hence driving up demand for the cryptocurrency. Specifics Rian Fugger's 2004 notion of a decentralized financial network called Ripple Pay served as the inspiration for the Ripple project. In the year 2012, OpenCoin, which is now known as Ripple, was formed by Jed McCaleb and Chris Larson, who also created XRP Ledger, a blockchain with an emphasis on scalable and quick payments. This blockchain utilizes a list known as the Unique Node List. To put it briefly, the XRP Ledger is safeguarded by Ripple's approved group of reliable validators who process transactions and reach consensus. It's crucial to understand that Ripple has significant influence over the Unique Node List, indicating significant centralization and tangible power at the hands of the original creator company. The supermajority consensus model refers to the consensus reached by the nodes themselves, whereby 80% or more of the nodes must vote for the transactions in question to be genuine. Banks can use a payment mechanism called RippleNet, 
which sometimes makes use of the XRP ledger blockchain and other times doesn't. Let's examine two instances, the first of which makes advantage of the blockchain. A payment needs to be sent from a Mexican bank to a Japanese bank. They make use of on-demand liquidity from RippleNet. The Mexican bank uses the XRP ledger blockchain to exchange Mexican pesos for XRP. Swiftly moving around the network, XRP serves as a stock app medium of exchange. After receiving XRP, the Japanese bank instantly exchanges it for Japanese yen. Here is an instance where RippleNet does not employ XRP ledger. Because they have no straw accounts, accounts denominated in each other's currencies, the two banks have an established direct link. They decide on the conditions and path of a cross-border payment via the messaging system offered by RippleNet. Then, using the conventional, non-blockchain-based channels they have already established, the payment settlement is completed. The Token Economy Now let's discuss the crucial topic of XRP tokenomics. Unlike, say, Bitcoins, which are mined, all 100 billion XRP coins are pre-minted, meaning they are made beforehand. Because of the way the project's code is configured, only a fixed amount of XRPs can be created at the beginning. The distribution of the 100 billion tokens in circulation is as follows. Donations of 20 billion XRP have been made to the Ripple creators. The Ripple firm has received 7 billion XRP tokens. There are 40 billion XRP tokens in circulation, which includes the 20 billion tokens that were given to Ripple's founders. The remaining 53 billion XRP tokens are placed in escrow and will be released to the Ripple Corporation via smart contracts at a pace of 1 billion per month. You can purchase 20 XRP as a minimum. This is based on the notion that an excessive number of transactions cannot overload the blockchain system at one time. The commission asserts that executives of Ripple engaged in an unlawful securities offering and that XRP is an unregistered security. The ongoing legal dispute is casting doubt on XRP's regulatory standing, which might impede its adoption by financial institutions and undermine investor trust. Nonetheless, the case is developing, and there is a possibility that XRP will win. There are several paths for appeal in this case and as of early 2024, no decision has been made. As always, if you're thinking about investing in Ripple, balance the benefits and dangers, utilize this lecture as a good starting point for your research, and behave like a professional by acting responsibly and making well-reasoned judgments. I'm excited to see you at the upcoming lecture.